Coming up on Network Africa. Authorities investigate calls of train crash that left at least 20 people injured south of Cairo. Over 500 killed following severe floods in Chad. And South Africa mourns the passing of former Reserve Bank Governor and Finance Minister Tito Ombaweni, who died at the age of 65. Hello everyone, I'm Amarachi Ubani. We begin in Egypt where authorities are investigating the cause of a deadly train crash that killed that occurred in the province of Minya, south of Cairo. The incident, which is the second in recent weeks, left at least 20 people injured. Local officials say a locomotive collided with the rear of a sleeper train en route from Aswan to Cairo, causing two train carriages to fall into the Ibrahimaya Canal in Upper Egypt. In recent years, authorities have announced initiatives to improve Egypt's railways. Back in 2018, the president estimated some 250 billion Egyptian pounds were needed to properly overhaul the North African country's neglected rail work. And more than 500 people have died following severe flooding in Chad. The country, which is already weakened by a recurring food crisis, is now dealing with the devastating impact of the floods, which hits all 23 of its provinces. Thousands of homes have been washed away by the disaster, and more than 400,000 hectares of farmland have been destroyed, comprising food security in a country, beg your pardon, compromising food insecurity in the country, where hunger already affects more than 3.4 million people. Critical infrastructure such as roads and bridges have also been submerged, making access to disaster areas particularly difficult for relief workers. Here in Nigeria, Vice President Kashim Chitima has launched the Nassau State Human Capital Development Strategy and Gender Transformative Human Capital Development Policy Framework. At the launch of the event in Lafia, the state capital, the state governor, Abdullahi Sule, assured that his administration will fully implement the documents. Our correspondent, Halima Gayom, has more. The Nasrallah State Governor, Abdullahi Sule, flanked by other stakeholders, usher in Nigeria's Vice President, Kashim Shatima, into the Aliyu Akwe Banquet Hall in Lafia. <laughs> Former governors of the state, Abdullahi Adamu and Tonko Al Makura, the Minister of State for Police Affairs, members of the National and State Assemblies, and other top government functionaries are also in attendance. The Vice President is in the Nasrawa State Capital for a one day working engagement to launch the State Human Capital Development Strategy document and its gender transformative human capital development policy framework. The Nasrallah State Governor pledges his commitment to the implementation of the two human capital development document launched by the Vice President. These documents will no doubt guide us to propel Nasrallah State into a new era of development, inclusivity and economic prosperity. The documents represent not only our shared vision for the future but also for our commitment to delivering measurable and sustainable results. The strategy document will create a platform for collaboration between ministries, departments and agencies and provide data for proper planning while the gender transformative policy framework will provide equity for both male and female genders. As we launch these documents, we do so with the recognition that it is far more than a mere compilation of policies, initiatives and programs. It is, in essence, a strategic blueprint for transformation. The Vice President of Nigeria notes that human capital development is the cornerstone of the federal government's policies. Enough of our vulnerable populations facing low life expectancy. Enough of the distressing data on our education system. Whether it is the mean years of schooling, 
the hired people to teacher ratios, or the staggering number of youth not in employment, education, or training. For so long, as the National Economic Council, we have debated the ideal nation we wish to build and the pathways to achieve it. At the heart of this national search for solutions is the HCD program. The Nasarawa State Human Capital Development Strategy document and the Gender Transformative Human Capital Development Policy Framework is an actionable roadmap that will further guide the state's interventions in education, healthcare, infrastructure and economic empowerment. Tagged Accelerating Growth and Development 2024-2030, to the document is aimed at propelling the state into a new era of development, inclusivity, and economic prosperity. Ali Magayam, Channel Television News. Meanwhile, a landmark initiative to tackle tuberculosis in Lagos State. The wife of the state governor, Dr. Bijoke Somolu, has inaugurated the local government and local council development areas, TV champions and ambassadors, as well as Lagos State TV Steering Committee and Lagos Stop TV Partnership to eradicate tuberculosis in the state. The governor's wife calls on the newly appointed TV champions to lead efforts in raising public awareness and improving access to diagnosis and treatment. As the inauguration of the Office of First... Wife of the Lagos State Governor, Dr. Bijoke Sawolu, has brought together medical practitioners in the public and private sector, foreign partners, and other stakeholders to help tackle the issue of tuberculosis in Lagos State. And stigma against anybody with TB. Lagos being one of the states accounting for about 10% of tuberculosis cases in Nigeria, necessitated the initiative championed by the Office of the First Lady to fight against TB through inauguration of TB champions. To establish the Stop TB Partnership and the TB Steering Committee is a crucial step towards a more coordinated and effective response to tuberculosis in our state. According to the World Health Organization, TB is the second leading infectious killer. In 2022, an estimated 10.6 million people fell ill with tuberculosis worldwide, including 5.8 million men, 3.5 million women, and 1.3 million children. The first country is India, 17%. You should expect the second country, which is Nigeria, 11%. And we are the sixth in the world and first in Africa. Less than 30% of our population know are aware about science and system of TB. If your population does not know about the signs and symptoms of the disease, how would you control that disease? The State Commissioner for Health, Professor Aki Abayomi, is concerned about the spread of TB in Lagos and says it is important to intensify community involvement in identifying and treating TB patients. Tuberculosis is an infectious condition. In other words, if you have it, you can infect somebody next to you or somebody you live with or someone you work with because it usually affects the lungs inside that air that you cough out is full of the bacteria tuberculosis bacteria so if you cough and you have tb you'll be coughing on the air around other people they will breathe it in and they will catch tb and they tell us that everybody with active TB that is not on treatment is infecting another 15 people every year. So let us just say that you have 10,000 people in Lagos who have not been identified with tuberculosis. Those 10,000 people are affect infecting 15 more people, each of them. 15 more people every year. Because of lack of knowledge, this disease can just spread and spread and spread and spread and spread. So, you have a very big job. The federal government is also willing to work with the Lagos State government to reduce the spread of TB. It is a great effort that will bring, one, awareness creation, two, we emphasize the importance of public health as well as it as I mean it as a whole in time of our response.
Dr. Ibijok Esawolu emphasized the need for collaboration across sectors to tackle the crisis effectively and break down the stigma associated with the disease. We are going to take the campaign to schools, to homes, orphanages, garages, markets, because you don't even know whether the person selling the meat has TB. You don't know. So that's why we need to actively take part in this thing. The event was rounded off with the inauguration of a local government and local council development areas, tuberculosis champions and ambassadors, as well as Lagos State TB Steering Committee and Lagos Stop TB Partnership. This occasion marks a unified effort to strengthen awareness, prevention and treatment of tuberculosis across Lagos State. We're off to South Africa, where President Cyril Maposa has expressed his deep sorrow over the death of the country's former Reserve Bank Governor and Minister of Labour and Finance, Dr. Tito Umbuweni, at the age of 65. President Maposa has made President Maposa made the condolences to his family and friends following his illness after short following his death after short illness. Dr. Mbaweni was the Democratic South Africa's first Minister of Labour from 1994 to 1999 in the Cabinet of Founding President Nelson Mandela. He served as Governor of the South African Reserve Bank for a decade. He was also Minister of Finance in President Ramaphosa's administration. He conducted himself with expert rigor while maintaining the personable touch that made him a social media star and ambassador for Mojaji's Kloof culinary traditions. As governor and finance minister, he had a sharp focus on fiscal discipline and economic transformation. Did Mbaweni distinguish himself in different strategic roles in the private sector and was a flag bearer in global forums of our economy and developing economies more broadly. Staying in South Africa, the Congress of Nigerian Students of the University of Johannesburg, also known as Konzuj, has, has gathered for the annual Niger Day Festival themed Leadership on Pursuit of Excellence. This year's event celebrates Nigeria's 64th anniversary. Our correspondent, Innocent Simosa, reports. The 2024 Niger Day Fiesta event coincides with the 64th anniversary of Nigeria's independence, making a milestone for both the students and their homeland. Adebayo Tachudin is the president of the Congress of Nigerian Students at the University of Johannesburg, also known as Konsuj. We know there are challenges back at home, but we believe in Nigeria's spirit and that there will be light at the end of his honor. In his keynote address, the president of the Nigerian Citizen Association in South Africa, Frank Onyekwelu, told students to be courageous. Whatever be your background, let it not be the reason why your back should remain on the ground. Wherever you are coming from, whatever you have seen so far, remember what is ahead of you. Whatever price you are paying today is for the glory you will celebrate tomorrow. Friends of the Nigerian students at the University of Johannesburg, both from South Africa and Zimbabwe, had this to say. With this mindset, I'm able to take it to my community. And when someone says, oh, Nigerians do these bad things, I'm like, wait, not this Nigerian, not my professor. As Africans, our diversity in our strength, we must learn from each other and uplift each other as a continent. The event also honored individual achievements. But how does this celebration of Nigeria's 64th independence resonate with students at the University of Johannesburg? The president of NANSA, Abdul Zarek Abubaka, had this to say. We appeal to the leaders, uh, President Bola Mintinibu and uh, his cabinet, the ministers, that they should please continue to work in the interest of the Nigerians in Nigeria and also in South Africa. Like our national item says, our tongues and tribes 
are different. But one common thing that has held us as Nigerian students in South Africa is the unity. Being that we are far away from home, this is just our way of, you know, showing our recognition and our allegiance to our home country that even though we are far away, we still remain Nigerians. That's why we are doing this to honor also our fathers and our mothers who have done so much for the country. Now, attendees told Channels Television that events like this are vitally important for cultural awareness and unity among students. From Johannesburg, South Africa, Innocent Samos, Channels Television News. There have been celebrations in Kenya following Ruth Chiptienche's triumph at the Chicago Marathon. On Sunday, Ruth set a new record by finishing in an impressive record time of 2 hours and 9 minutes and 57 seconds. That's nearly two minutes ahead of the previous record held by Ethiopian athlete Tixt Asifa in Berlin last year. Asifa finished the marathon in 2 hours, 11 minutes and 53 seconds. Speaking after the event, the 30-year-old said she felt so great and proud of herself, indicating her dreams had finally come true. In her words, I fought a lot thinking about the world record and I have fulfilled it. Meanwhile, in the men's category, John Curry, another Kenyan, emerged victorious as well as, as well in a time of two hours, two minutes and 44 seconds. He finished ahead, taking over the record from Kelvin Kipton the world record holder who died in a car accident in February at just the age of 23. Kenyan journalist Cyrus Sambati joins us now. Cyrus, you must feel a relief having to talk about something more cheery and not about the problems of Kenya, which has been plagued by cost of living crisis, um, people, restive youths who are angry at the government. This must be a relief for everyone, right? Yeah, sure, you're right, you're right, because uh, it was the uh, first hit for the by this gun. And, and I'm sure that, you know, uh, one of the reasons why this is coming um, to Kenya as a relief is the fact that she broke a world record. I mean, that is something that places the country on the map, especially with sports. You know, Kenyan athletes have always done well outside. How are the celebrations at home and people reacting to this? Well, when the news came out that she had broken that record yesterday, it was, it was a night here in Kenya then. And uh, all over because people were glued on the television, were watching whatever was happening in Chicago, and uh, all the social joints. People are cheering her in her home rural home county. Everyone was celebrating her whatever she scored yesterday. And we understand that the minister of uh, agriculture, the minister of uh, sports, is planning a, a series of activities to actually celebrate her whatever she broke yesterday. The record she broke yesterday. So. When she lands back in Kenya, there are, there are many activities that are planned to welcome her back to Kenya. Yeah. Uh, has the president said anything about this, uh, you know, about her win and what this means for the country and for the, for the sports community? Well, yeah, the president was a man in Kenya. And the other guy, the other man who won. Yeah. Whatever happened yesterday, Kenya is indeed a, a leader in the sports in the sports category, and they promised that uh, he will make sure that the road gets what she deserves. That's a high, highest recognition in the country. So we expect that, that when uh, she's in the country, back with the Kenya in the Kenya, uh, he she will be recognized so, so highly. The president will welcome her uh, as usual. She, he will uh, uh, greet her, kind of uh, also reward her man, money wise. They usually, the, the winners of such kind of a sport, they usually given money and other awards, which, which many people don't know what it may be a car or they, 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 they have their, their houses built. So we are waiting to see more to come from the president himself. And I began this conversation by talking about what Kenya has been going through this year. They've had some major protests. Uh, people protesting the cost of living crisis at some point were asking for the president to step down. So um, when people think about you know um uh, ruth's return and all that will be done for her do they also think about you know the other kenyans who were left to face the rest of um you know the country's problems i mean ruth will not be subjected to uh, a cost of living crisis i hope 
Bro, well, you see, the problem here in Kenya, sports usually unite Kenya, they forget their problems in briefly. Whenever there's such kind of a sport uh, uh, happening, especially out of the country, and people are united, uh, they, they forget their, briefly their problems. But Ruth is also among the people affected by the cost of living in Kenya because uh, if, when it comes to taxation, uh, we, we hear that even sportsmen are also, uh, also subject to such kind of taxation. So she's not the only one affected. Uh, it's not only Kenya who affected, even her should be affected by the, by the whole problem. So it's, a, it's actually a problem which is affecting everyone when it comes to cost of living. Right. So, um, and then um, w when you when you're celebrating Ruth, you're also remembering other artists who, beg your pardon, not artists, ad other athletes um, who have unfortunately not been able to celebrate uh, with Ruth. Um, just a few months ago, there was um, the uh, murder, I will say, of a Kenyan athlete in Uganda. Um, is this, you know, some? This is to provide some comfort, you know, for the sports community, the athletes in in Kenya, uh, knowing that, you know, they're still able to thrive and win outside despite the challenges that they have to face in their personal lives. Yeah, you see, even uh, the, the win of the marathon, the coach, Mr. Korin, who won the man sign, actually recognized Mr. Kitum, who was a, a promising uh, kind of uh, athlete who died in an accident. Then, as you put it very clearly, last month we lost uh, another athlete, a female athlete from uh, Uganda, who was murdered by her husband, who also actually died, unfortunately died in the same incident because it was an accident. These uh, such incidents actually will never happen. It affects the entire country because you can see how the news are broken, how people react to the same. Then now, when it comes to this winning, it's a uh, it's kind of a consolation that uh, indeed the sport is still going on and. Uh, and the, 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 the combination people are giving to these uh, the deceased uh, athletes, it gives morale to other upcoming athletes. It's a, it's a morale boost in a way. Yeah, Cyrus, well, congratulations to you and to the rest of Kenya uh, for this big win. Uh, I'm sure the rest of Africa is also celebrating with you at this time. Sure, sure. Thank you so much for having me this morning. Well, here in Nigeria, however, the Minister of Sports Development, Senator John Enno, has strongly condemned the obnoxious treatment meted on players and officials of the senior national team, the Super Eagles, on arrival in Libya for the return leg of their Afghan qualifier. The minister instructed the NFF president to lay a formal complaint to CAF without prejudice to any actions already taken as the situation must be on record and thoroughly addressed. He says the minister rejected the suggestion by CAF president that the national team honours tomorrow's match. We'll end Network Africa with uh, a place in Nigeria known as the twin capital of the world, or similar to the land of twins, the annual twin festival did hold recently in the town of Igbora. The abundance of twins in the town is often celebrated as a blessing and a gift. The festival featured a procession of twins in of various ages, parading in pairs, taking photographs, dressed in, of course, in matching outfits, and accompanied by drummers and dancers. Mm. Must be a really good celebration. Thanks for watching Network Africa. I'm Amarachi Rani.